The hydraulics on two Ford 8 ends in my shop right now don't work. If you have non-working hydraulics, then this is the video for you. First, I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot and pinpoint exactly where the problem lies on your tractor. Most of the time when people's hydraulics quit, the first thing they think of is, oh, I need to replace my hydraulic pump or rebuild my hydraulic pump. And while the pump is sometimes the case, there's actually four problems with Ford hydraulics and your tractor could have one of those different problems or a combination of two or more problems. So watch this video and I'll show you exactly how to figure out what is wrong with your 8N Ford tractor. Now these techniques do still apply to a 9N or 2N Ford tractor and there are some similarities to a Ferguson TO20 or a Ferguson TO30 tractor as well. So the very first thing you need to do when you want to troubleshoot your tractor is start it up and take the side cover off of your housing here. I have the inspection cover off with a pan underneath to catch any oil that's going to leak out. My tractor is running, so now I can look to see what is happening with the oil. I'm going to move my lever up and down. You can see that my three-point arms don't go up and down at all, and nothing happens inside this inspection cover. My oil is still, I mean, you can see a little bit of movement because the PTO is going around, but I'm looking for it to leak out of the top of the chamber here. I'm looking for it to um, have a twirling motion. I'm looking for it to rain down from the top lid and none of that is happening with my tractor. Therefore, I think that the problem lies with the lever. Either that little tiny pin is bad, it's broken off underneath the oil level and I can't see that, or it's not in the valve in the bottom of the pump. That's definitely one problem. It has to do with the lever or the pin. It could have a second problem as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is drain enough oil so that there's maybe one gallon left. So the system's not dry, but I'll be able to see more of the pump and be able to see the relief valve at the bottom of the pump as well as the valve that this uh, lever is connected into at the bottom. With my oil level lower, I'm going to again start the tractor and take a look at the pump and the oil and see what's going on. These are things that I'm looking for. First, I'm looking at both sides of the pump to see if the chambers are physically cracked, which happens in a state like Michigan where those could freeze. I'm looking for oil to leak out of the side here where the gasket is sealed between the pump housing and the chamber because that could be blown. I'm looking for it to leak out of the top here. I'm also looking at the relief valve. Oil could be spitting out of the relief valve and it could look like a whirlpool jet inside uh, your housing here. And if that's the case, then your relief valve would be bad. Down here, I'm making sure that this valve is engaging properly. So the pin will drop down into this hole in the valve and then when you move that lever, it should go in and out. That is not happening on my tractor, but it should happen and if you know that's happening then that's not your problem and if it's not happening that is your problem so go ahead and look at all of those steps here in the pump to see if you can determine if that's the problem on your tractor or not the next thing we're going to do on this tractor is take the top lid off and that will enable us to do even more troubleshooting on the pump I need to take both of my three-point arms off so you can pull this pin out and then your arm will drop down. Sometimes these are really stuck on so you might have to use a torch in order to get those pins out. Don't forget about your control up here. There's one more pin that slides through here. It'll drop down and your spring your, for your draft control here can stay with the top lid. Now when you take your top lid off, your arms do need to be in the down position as I have mine. If you have an 8N, your top lid will just lift right off. However, if you have a 9N or a 2N, that valve has a T with the uh, ball joints on it, so you need to remove those before you lift up. You can reach into your um, hole from the side here and take that off both sides. Then once you have that valve free, then you can lift your top lid off. If you don't do that, you will uh, break that at the bottom which you don't want to do. Then you can take off all of the bolts that are around the edges of your top lid. These four in the center don't remove now. Those hold your cylinder in that has your piston so don't remove those four, just the ones on the outside. You did notice probably when you take these apart that some of these are shorter and longer and you'll put those in the same order when you go to put your top lid back on. So with all of that we're ready to lift the top lid 
up. You can see that I have a cherry picker hooked up with a bolt through where the seat would go. And um, if you are stronger than me, you might be able to lift that off yourself and not use a cherry picker. Or if you have a friend, then you could do that. But I like to use the cherry picker. It's a little easier. So our top lid just comes off like this and that will allow us to do um, some further inspection on it. Here's a close-up of what the valve would look like on a 9-inch or 2-inch tractor. Inside the hole, or inside the transmission, you'll see the valve inside the, the uh, pump like this with the wishbone here. You have to take the two ends off of the wishbone while the top lid is on the tractor before you lift the top lid up in order to repair it. Now, the pump is exactly the same on a 9-inch, 2-inch, and an 8-inch. The only difference is this valve. Sometimes on the top lid, the, these parts here will be sheet metal and they'll just get relaxed over time and they'll keep popping off of that valve at the bottom. If that's the case on your tractor, a simple and cheap fix is just to put a rubber band around the arms here and that will hold your arms onto the wishbone. So if you have a 9N or 2N, it's going to look slightly different than my tractor here, but that's the only difference that you'll see. With the top lid off, we're ready to do some more troubleshooting on the pump. Here's what I'm looking for. Uh, I want to make sure that the pump is indeed pumping and it's coming up this tube and out this hole right here. There could be a problem with the pump or there could be a problem with the tube or both, but sometimes those tubes will freeze and crack in the winter. Also, I'm taking a look at this gasket to make sure that the head gasket hasn't blown. Mine shows no damage, but that would be something you would want to check. So at this point, I'm going to start the tractor up. I have this pry bar down here at the control valve, and I'm going to move the control valve back and forth. And when I do, if my pump is working properly, oil will shoot out of here a couple feet high. If oil doesn't, and I'm confident that I'm moving my control valve back and forth, then that would be an indication that my pump is bad. Now, when I start the tractor, there's going to be lots of moving parts. Of course, the PTO will be going around, and oil is going to be shooting up. So be careful. Make sure that everything's out of the way and wear those safety glasses. Have a rag ready and we'll go ahead and move that control valve. I did add a little bit more oil to the system so that there's enough to shoot out. Go ahead. I see a little bit of oil coming out and when I move that control valve I have nothing, no change so that indicates to me that the pump is indeed bad. We'll go ahead and figure out exactly where that problem is with the pump. Next we got to drop it out of the bottom of the tractor. I'm finished troubleshooting this AN. I decided that there is a problem both with the hydraulic pump as well as the control lever. Remember, I would move the lever up and down and that control arm wouldn't make any changes in the three-point hitch. Now, those aren't the only problems that an 8N Ford will have. There's other problems within the hydraulic system and I have another 8N Ford here in the shop with hydraulics that don't work. So stay with me. We're going to troubleshoot that other tractor. Then at the end, once you've determined exactly what your problem is, I have separate videos that you can watch, which will walk you through the process step by step to make those repairs. The hydraulics on this AN don't have enough power. When a blade is on the back of this tractor, the three-point arms will not lift up. However, if there's no attachment on the three-point arms, they will lift up on their own, but then they drift down way too fast on their own without lowering the lever. That's a major problem. So from the outside inspection, I see already that this spring is way too loose. Um, this is the draft control spring. It should be very snug. Even if it just moved a little bit, I would still be concerned. This one obviously moves a ton, so it's a huge concern. But this should be very snug, and this plate back here should be in good condition. We can replace that and repair it, no problem, and I'll show you how in the top lid video. Now there's also another problem with this tractor. The spring isn't the only issue. When I start this tractor up, you can see I have the inspection door off. I can't see anything that happens in the oil, but I can definitely hear that it's dripping down from the top at the front here. I, I can't see it, but I can hear it. So I want you to see that as well. So we'll go ahead and start the tractor. We'll lift the arms up and you'll see what happens here. Okay, I'm going to lift the arms up here. And you'll see that they do come up with no load on back. That tells me that the pump is good. The pump is working since the arms do come up. But watch this. They drift on their own. And when I put more pressure, you see that they drift even more. And you can hear the oil dripping down. Let me step on this to get some more pressure. You can definitely hear that oil moving, which is an indication that there's a problem in the top whether that's the piston, the cylinder, a problem with the top lid gasket or that tube, 
We don't know yet, but we'll find that out once we take the top lid off. You'll remove that in the same manner that you did before, where you just take those perimeter bolts off, not those center four, and lift that top lid free. With the top lid off, we can see a lot of what's going on inside the tractor. I definitely see that this plate is damaged like we talked about before. Underneath here, this pin should be round and it's squared off on the one side. I definitely think there's a problem with the piston inside there since it was leaking down, so we'll take the uh, the cylinder off and inspect the piston. I also see a problem with this head gasket here and you can see that on the tractor as well. So multiple issues within the top lid on this tractor. Now one word about operator error. Uh, we have had times when someone thinks that their hydraulics don't work and they just don't know how to operate them properly. Your PTO needs to be turned on and your foot has to be off the clutch in order for your hydraulics to work. So if the PTO isn't going around then the pump isn't going around. So make sure both of those things are in place in your tractor. Another word is that we took our wheel and fender off only so that you could see with the camera easier what is going on in the tractor. You definitely don't need to do that step on your own tractor when you're troubleshooting it. So now that you have determined exactly where your problem lies, you can watch either the hydraulic pump rebuild video, or you can watch the top lid repair video, or if you determined you have a problem in both places, then you can watch both of them. When you are ready to make this repair on your own tractor, we offer you all of the parts that you're going to need. Right here is a hydraulic pump repair kit where you get all of these parts and it's a pretty affordable way to purchase them if you're going to need them all. That includes the pistons, we have the new bushing, relief valve, cam blocks are back here, the gaskets that you see, as well as both the right and the left side chambers. When you purchase the chambers like this, the valves come already set and installed in there for you, so it's easy to just bolt those on. If you don't need the entire kit, we do offer each of these parts individually so that you could um, just replace some of the pump parts if you don't need them all. Up here we have the valves which go inside the chamber. If you are going to rebuild the valves on both the right and the left hand side, you need to purchase two valve kits. Back here we have the piston. This is the upgraded Jubilee piston with both the O-ring and the leather backer. And we also offer the cylinder. Those sometimes crack so you might need a new cylinder. Up here, we have the pin, we have a new dipstick. This is the gasket that goes um, on the bottom by the drain plug. This gasket goes on the side cover, and this one is for the PTO. If you think that you might need to take your PTO out more than once, you might wanna purchase two of these gaskets because you'll probably damage it, and they're super cheap. This is the felt and the backer plate for the draft control, and this cork goes by the handle. We also offer this valve, which is only for a 9N or 2N Ford tractor. This is a gasket kit for the top lid. This is for the upgraded top lid if you go ahead and upgrade your Jubilee, upgrade to the Jubilee style piston. This has the gaskets that you need, which you can see all laid out here. So when you're ready to make that repair, you can purchase these parts at farmtractorrepair.com. Your purchase on that site helps to fund future tractor repair tutorials.